السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. أول خطوة في أن نتراحم فيما بيننا أن نرجو السلام بيننا. فنقول السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. The first step for us to have mercy towards one another is that we convey the greetings of peace and we say Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah upon all of you and His blessings. Therefore, if we want to spread mercy and convey mercy between uh, each other, then we have to send each other salam regularly. Because when we send readings of peace to one another, we say, may the peace and the mercy and the blessings of Allah be upon you. And the one who is greeted responds by saying, and may the, the mercy and peace and blessings of Allah be upon you as well. So when we convey these greetings to one another, we are sharing and reciprocating the mercy and the blessings and the peace of Allah upon one another. And that is why if a Muslim passes by their Muslim brother, and they do not convey the salams to them. The one who does not convey is the first one who is missing out. Because by not conveying, they are missing out on receiving the blessings and the mercy and the peace of Allah that will then be prayed for upon them by the one who responds. <laughs> أن نسلم على أهل البيت فإن لم يكن فيها أحد من أهل البيت فنسلم على عباد الله الصالحين من الملائكة وعمار البيوت من صالح الجن فإن لم يكن بذلك فنقول السلام علينا تحية من عند الله وبركة طيبة ورحمة الله وبركاته and that is why when we even enter our homes, our beloved وسلم, taught us to send salams upon our family, the people who are living in the house. And uh, if no one is home, then we say, As-salamu ala ibadillahi salihin. Peace be upon the righteous servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning the angels and the righteous ones among the jinn uh, and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then if we do not find anyone at all, we can just say, and we ask Allah's peace to be upon our own selves, a blessed and a good and beautiful form of peace that He descends upon us. <laughs> على إخوانه من المسلمين والمؤمنين فإنه لا يموت حتى تسلم عليه الملائكة عند خروج روحه فتقول له سلام قولا من رب الرحيم. And they say for that reason that salam to their uh, fellow Muslims that if a person is consistent in that then at the moment of their passing when their soul is exiting their body, they will hear the angels responding to them and giving them readings of peace. As Allah says in the Quran, uh, peace be upon you, salamun awla min rabbil rahim, a word from a generous, uh, uh, from a merciful Lord. وَلِذَلِكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالَ لَنَا وَاللَّهِ 
لن تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحاكوا ألا and, and that's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said You will not enter paradise until you believe And you will not believe until you love one another أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَهُمْ Shall I not then guide you to something that if you do it It will create love between you he said, spread salam, spread the greetings of peace among yourselves. And for that reason, alhamdulillah, all of us we pray. Every single Muslim prays five times a day, at least the five obligatory prayers. And there are those who add the extra prayers, the voluntary prayers, and alhamdulillah we all establish that. How do you end the prayer when you exit it? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We say the salam, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah. So you send the greeting of peace to those that are on your right and you send the greeting of peace to those who are on your left from those who are praying with you and from the believing uh, human beings and jinn and to the angels as well. <laughs> في أول الكلمة حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن. Oh my loved ones, we heard at the beginning the introduction of the speech, a hadith from the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, in which he says, those who are merciful are shown mercy by the All Merciful. يرحمه من في الأرض يرحمه من في السماء. Have mercy to those that are on earth, and the one in the heavens will have mercy on you. The first person that you have to show mercy towards is your own self. And for that reason, one might ask, how is a person, how can a person be merciful to their own selves? بمعنى أنك لا تكون سببا في منع رحمة الله أن تصل إليك. And the meaning of that is is that you do not become a cause for the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى not to reach you. كيف الإنسان يمنع رحمة الله أن تصل إليك؟ And how can a person do something that would prevent the mercy of Allah from reaching them? نعم ممكن أن يمنع الإنسان رحمة الله أن تصله. Yes, it is a fact that one can do something to prevent the mercy of Allah from reaching them. وهذا أف أفضل أنواع الظلم. And this is the worst form of oppression. وهي وهي ظلم النفس. And this is the oppression and the wrongdoing that one does to their own self. كيف يظلم الإنسان نفسه؟ how does a person wrong their own self? By two things. Is that a person takes themselves into the area of Allah's wrath. And that is through acts of disobedience and sin. The second thing. And the second thing is that a person uh, prevents themselves from the mercy of Allah and His forgiveness by their own self. And that is why when we hear the, the reward of certain acts of obedience is that Allah will grant His mercy and forgiveness. For example, حينما نسمع كلام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
When we hear the words of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever, after they eat food or a meal, they say, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah who fed me this food without any power or ability of my own. فمن أكل ولم يحمد الله فقد حرم نفسه هذه المقرة فقد وقد ظلمها بذلك. So if a person eats and eats food and then does not praise Allah after eating the food, then they have prevented themselves from receiving that forgiveness, and by doing so, they have wronged their own selves. انتبه. Pay attention. أن هذه الرحمة ليس فقط أن تقول الحمد لله تسكت. That this mercy is not just to say Alhamdulillah and then you don't say anything after that. بل تقول الحمد لله الذي أطعمني هذا الطعام ورزقني من غير حول مني ولا قوة. It is to say this prophetic du'a that Habib said the translation of which is Alhamdulillah all praise belongs to Allah الذي أطعمني هذا الطعام the one who fed me this food. وَرَزَقَنِيهِ and provided it for me بِغَيْرِ حَوْلِ مِنِّي وَلَا قُوَى without any power or ability of my own. هذه عبودية. This is servitude. هذا افتقار إلى الله. This is showing your neediness to Allah. مهما كنت عظيما في الدنيا. No matter how great you are in the world. مهما كنت غنيا في الدنيا. No matter how wealthy you are in the world. فأنت فقير إلى هذا الماء. You are still in need of this uh, this water that you drink. You are still in need of food. And with that, Allah Azza wa Jalla rabbat al-rahmata idha hamidtahu wa shahidta nahu bil-fadli alayhi wa bil-fiqarika ilayhi. Allah has given mercy with that meal and that food if at the end of it you praise him and you thank him for it. ومن فضل الله ومن السنة لو اجتمع أناس على طعام واحد لو قال ذلك فرد واحد لعم الجميع تلك المقرة. And of the mercy and the grace of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is that if a group of people come together over a meal together and they eat together and one person from that group brings this dua and says this dua that the forgiveness and the mercy encompasses everyone present. مثال آخر. Another example. When the Messenger of Allah says, "Man qala fi yawmi Subhan Allahi wa bihamdi Subhan Allahi qufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhabhi wa lo kala mitha zabal al-bahi qufira zubu wa lo kala mitha zabal al-bahi." That the Messenger of Allah says, whoever says Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah alim, one hundred times a day, then their sins, their previous sins, will be forgiven, even if it's as numerous as the foam of the sea. لو أن إنسان مر عليه يوم ولم يقول هذا الذكر فقد منع رحمة الله له لهذه المرحلة. If a person's day goes by. And they don't say this dua, and then they have prevented themselves from receiving the mercy of Allah and His forgiveness. ولذلك أنت عندما تذكر الله الله يذكرك ويرحمك ويعلي درجاتك. And also, when you remember Allah, Allah makes mention of you and bestows His mercy upon you and bestows His blessings upon you, and He elevates your rank. رحمة الله واسعة. The mercy of Allah is vast. It is great. كبيرة. It is it is plenty. هل تريدون أن تعلموا أي الرحمات أعظم بالنسبة لها؟ Do you want to know which mercy is the greatest in particular to your needs? إذا صليت عن النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. If you send salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صلى عليه صلاة صلى الله عليه عشرة أي عشر رحمات. 
The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, if a, if a person sends one prayer of peace and blessings upon me, Allah will bestow ten upon them. And that means ten mercies will be given to them. <laughs> one mercy from Allah suffices. <laughs> so what then about ten mercies? Not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorious and majestic, but his angels as well. Because Allah says in the Quran, uh, Allah and his angels bless, uh, send blessings upon you to uh, take you out of the darknesses into the light. ولذلك حينما تصلي على النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن الله عز وجل ينزل عليك عشر رحمات فإذا كان مرتين عشرين رحمة ثلاث مرات ثلاث رحمة وكلما زدت زادت لك الرحمة ورحمة واحدة إذا نزلت تتفرع 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 and for that reason, if you send one salah, one peace and blessing upon the Prophet, Allah will bestow ten upon you. And if you do two, then you will receive twenty. And if you do three, then you will receive thirty and four, forty, and so on and so forth. And if one mercy reaches you, branch out. <laughs> Every prophet that was sent to humanity, that was sent to previous peoples, they were sent as either someone coming with glad tidings or as one coming with a warning. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was sent as a mercy to all the world. حينما تدخلون إلى هذا المسجد من باب المسجد ماذا تقولون بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم اغفر لذنوبي وافتح لي أبواب رحمتك. Whenever when you enter the door of the masjid and you enter this masjid, what do we say? We say بسم الله in the name of Allah and we send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad and we say uh, Oh Allah for Forgive me my sins and open for me the gates of your mercy. Because just by sending salawat upon the Prophet وسلم, the gates of mercy are open for you. You just see it as a door in which you enter into the masjid, but in reality, it is many doors that have opened up for you. And you uh, want to pray, you come to the masjid to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so why are you sending salawat upon the Prophet because we are an ummah, the majority of us uh, have not seen the Messenger of Allah. And therefore, when we send salawat upon him, our love for him is renewed and uh, it is reignited and we become more attached to him, so when you make wudu in preparation for prayer and after you, you are done making the wudu, say, I bear witness that there is no, no God but Allah and I bear witness that our Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then you enter into the Masjid and you send salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then you enter into the prayer and in the prayer you say, Assalamu Alaikum 
peace be upon you, uh, O Prophet of Allah, and the blessings and mercy of Allah. So in every situation, you are connected and sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet and it has been narrated in the Sunan of Imam al Nasa'i that the Prophet said that the Prophet said, Whoever sends one salawat upon me, that they will get ten rewards, and will be recorded for them as ten rewards. And ten sins will be forgiven, and they will be elevated ten degrees in rank. So we will return back to the hadith uh, that was mentioned of the Prophet ﷺ, that the merciful ones are shown mercy by the Rahman, the All Merciful. Uh, he did not say that the merciful ones are shown mercy by Allah. But, but uh, that the name that Allah has given Himself, Ar Rahman, the All Merciful. And uh, such that it means that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you, showing mercy to your own self and showing mercy to everyone around you, that you will then be given the greatest degrees of His mercy. So now we have spoken about and we understand how you can show mercy to your own self. Do not fall into sin. And do not withhold and prevent yourself from mercy. Are we all in agreement on that? So now, how do we have mercy for one another? Allah Azza wa Jal, when He mentioned the name of the Prophet Muhammad in the Surah Al Fatih, He said, "Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, and the ones who are with Him. Who wants to be with the Messenger of Muhammad? Then he will be the Messenger of the Unbelievers, the Messenger of the Unbelievers." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned the name of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Surah Al-Fatih, he said, Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah and those who are with him. So if you want to be of those who are with him, then you have these qualities. He said that they are firm on the disbelievers and they are merciful towards one another. The mercy that we have with one another has two meanings. المعنى الأول، the first meaning، شعورك في نفسك، is a feeling that you have within yourself، أنك تشتاق إلى أخيك المسلم، is that you yearn for your fellow Muslim، تفرح بإقباله، that you are very happy when you meet them، تفرح إذا رأيته، you are very happy when you see them، تفرح إذا اتصل عليك مثلاً، you are very happy when they call you for example. And the sign of that is that is that you go and you shake hands with them. The, the Prophet said, if two Muslims meet one another and they shake hands, the ten mercies are descended upon them. Nine of those mercies go for the one who is happier at meeting their fellow Muslim. And one portion of the mercy for the other one. Allahu Akbar. This is a great mercy. And now, what's the number of the people here? It's a lot, inshallah. So if you want a lot of mercy of this gathering, 
Then when you enter the masjid, you, you say the dua. When you, uh, you, when you are leaving the masjid, you say the dua. And while we are here, then uh, the men, they, they shake hands with one another, they express joy, and the women shake hands with one another, and they express joy, and that way you will get a, lot, a great portion of mercy. There are ten portions of mercy, nine go to the one who begins and, uh, the salam and shows and has greater joy and happiness in meeting their fellow Muslim and one for the other. So when you shake hands with your fellow Muslim and you look and you look in their face and you smile in, in their face. Then you will get the reward for saying the salam, you will get the reward for shaking hands, and you will get the reward for smiling. So then if we said that uh, the reward the reward of the, the handshake is nine of the ten portions of mercy. And that the reward of the salam is ten rewards, and the least, uh, the least which one needs to do to attain that is to say as-salamu alaykum. And that the reward for smiling is, as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, and you smiling in the face of your brother is a charity. And then you smile for Allah, not just uh, uh, not just flattering them. That you smile and your heart loves that person, you're not internally insulting them or saying bad things about them. And all praise be lost to Allah because this is a mercy from Him, glorious and majestic. That it can even it can occur between a husband and wife that there might be miscommunication and disagreement. That saying salam it will get rid of three quarters of the problems. And for that reason, when we get into uh, the learning about the mercy that we show towards one another, the sign of those who are showing mercy to one another, as mentioned in the verse, is that if you are distant or you have not seen your fellow Muslim, that you ask about them. You seek out how they're doing. Where is so and so? لم نره مثلاً في المسجد أو في الصلاة. I haven't seen him in the masjid or at the prayer. هو مريض فنزوره. Is he sick so I can visit him? هل هو محتاج إلى شيء فنعطيه? Is he in need of something so we can give it to him? هل هو يعني متضايق مني فأعتذر إليه? Is he upset with me such that I can ask his forgiveness and apologize? هل هو مات؟ has he passed away so that I can attend this funeral? They see their fellow Muslim appearing to be sad, they don't just leave them alone to themselves. They check in on them and they ask them, are you okay? What is it that's bothering you? What's going on? And they see how they're doing. And this should occur even between spouses. <laughs> if, if you see that your wife, for example, is not saying salam to you, she's not talking to you, she's not uh, giving you good food, then maybe she's upset with you. 
So for that reason, you have to ask about her. Why are you uh, sad? Not, you don't ask because you want the good food. <laughs> but because she's your wife. The Prophet ﷺ had something occur to him with one of his wives. Safiya bint Huyay. Safiya bint Huyay. And she's from the children of Israel. <laughs> that her grandfather or her uncle is Sayyidina Musa. <laughs> yeah, that she's Jewish. <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ married her. <laughs> and you know the Prophet ﷺ, he had nine wives. That day, one day, the Prophet وسلم, came upon, entered upon Sayyidina Safiya bin Huyay. He said, Assalamu alaikum, Safiya, and the mercy of Allah and His blessings upon you. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. There was some sadness in her heart. Ya Safiya, ma bihi? He said, Oh Safiya, what's wrong? This is how a husband should be. Why are you sad? So she said that Hafsa, another wife of the Prophet, she said something to her, she said something that hurt her. She said, Oh, daughter of a Jewish man. So the Prophet وسلم, he wanted to uh, uh, you know appease her heart and, and heal her heart. He said, Oh Safiya, tell Hafsa, yes, I am a Jewish woman. But my grandfather is Musa. And he is a prophet. And my uncle is Harun. And he is a brother of Musa. And he is a prophet. And my husband is the messenger of Allah. He said, but who's your father? He is Umar ibn al-Khattab. So she got happy. So she went to the house of Hafsa. So the sadness turns it into a great joy. Instead of having one prophet, she had three prophets with her. This is the Prophet. Does the Prophet have enough time to talk to his wives? To talk about their problems? And nowadays, we might not even ask about how our wives or children are doing because we say we're so busy, we're so busy, we're so busy. What are you so busy with? The Prophet ﷺ is concerned with the affairs of all of creation. Not just humans and jinn, all of creation. Because Allah said, we sent you only as a mercy for all the worlds. From this is where mercy comes from. When we ask about one another. Even if you see a child that seems to be sad, play with them and ask about them and smile at them such that they might become happier. And from the people who are the greatest and most deserving of your mercy are your two parents. Allah says in the Quran and lower the wing of humility to them for what reason? Out of mercy. That Allah says, uh, he, uh, humble yourself before them, uh, uh, not just out of servitude, but out of mercy. 
إذا نظرت إلى أبيك أو أمك فانظر إليهما نظرة الرحمة والشفقة. When you look at your father or your mother, look at them with a gaze of mercy, لا compassion. لا نظرة التكبر. Don't look at them with a gaze of a haughtiness and arrogance. أو الاستحقار. Or looking down at them. أنت ربما تخرجت من أعرق الجامعات. You might be a graduate of some of the greatest universities. لك شهادات كثيرة. And you have great diplomas, many diplomas. لك ألوف من المتابعين. You might have thousands of followers on Twitter, for example. بينما أبوك وأمك ربما لا علم لهم. But maybe your two, father or mother, don't even have any knowledge. أنت وشهاداتك ومتابعوك لا تساوي شعرة في رأس أمك. You and all of your diplomas and all of your followers, they are not equal to one hair on your mother's head. ولا عرقة من جبين أبيك. And not one drop of sweat from the forehead of your father. وكل ذلك في حياتك كلها تذهب إذا دمعة حسن خرجت من عين أبيك أو أمك. And all of that is gone for nothing if 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 by one a teardrop of sadness that comes out of the eye of your mother or father. And I am here before you. When people ask me, who are your teachers? I say my first shiuch, my first teachers, are my father and mother. This is true. They are the first to teach me the Fatiha. That uh, the first person to teach you the Fatiha, then they are of your shiyuk, because you recite the Fatiha in every rak'ah of prayer. الذي يعلمك الوضوء إذا أمك علمتك الصلاة علمتك الوضوء علمتك الاستنجاء فهذا أول درس من دروس الفقه. If your mother teaches you how to make wudu or she teaches you how to pray or she teaches you how to clean yourself properly then this is the first lesson in fiqh. أو علمك أدب أدب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف تأكل كيف تلبس كيف تدخل دورة المياه سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولو سنة واحدة. And if they teach you how to the adab the the manners of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم how to eat how to enter the bathroom how to do these different adab of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم even if it's just one adab. هل تستطيع أن تقول أول شيء هم أبوك أو أمك؟ Then uh, are you able to then say that you're the first of your shuyukh are your mother and father? If you're kind of nervous or unsure about that, then your mercy towards them is deficient. And say, Allah says, and say, my Lord, have mercy upon both of them, just as they raised me when I was young. وحذر أن تقول. and be careful from saying. إذا وقعت في مشكلة. if you're in a difficulty. لا تقول هذا بسبب أبي أم. oh don't say oh this is because of my mother and father. ولو كان الله أن مو بسبب. even if outwardly they are the reason. أدبك مع الله ومعهما. your adab with Allah and with the two of them. أن تنسب النقص لنفسك. is that you attribute the deficiency to yourself. والكمال لهما. and the completion and perfection to them. هذا هو البر. This is goodness to parents. ما من طفل حينما قبل أن تحمل بأمه إلى أن يموت من أول ما تحمل بأمه إلى أن يموت ما خل يوم من دعوات أبي أمي له. From the moment a child is developing in the womb until the day that they die, they every single day they are receiving dua from their mother and father. فكيف لو أن الله أكرم رجل المرأة بالإسلام وارضى والديه لا زال عن كفر. So what about someone who a woman or a man whom Allah has blessed with entering into Islam while their parents remain upon disbelief? لا بد أن يبكي لهم من الرحمة. He must cry for them 
out of mercy. And that his heart become cut up in pieces out of mercy for them. And that he humbles himself before Allah for the, for the sake of both of them. They are more deserving. They are the most deserving. The first people that you should pray for are your two parents. This is mercy. And do not be shy. If your friends ask you, is that your dad? You say, yes. There are some people who they get nervous about that. They say, oh, my parents are a little bit backwards. People, uh, they live just according to outward appearances. On the day of judgment, there is no place for outward appearances. On a day when wealth and children are of no benefit, except one who comes to Allah with a sound heart. So look at yourself. Who do you show mercy to? And those you show mercy to as well. And that you also have mercy upon the weak among people. Those who are elderly. Those who are ill. Those who are weak. Those who are going through tribulations. Those who have difficulties descending upon them. You have to show compassion towards them. The least of which is that you pray for them. This is our deen. The Prophet said, the Prophet said, Wallahi, they don't believe. Wallahi, they don't believe. Wallahi, they don't believe. Who goes to sleep satiated while their neighbor is hungry. This is how our deen should be. That when the least of what we should do is that if we are sitting down to eat and the food is presented before us, we should say, Oh Allah, I ask you that my neighbors are eating better than that which I am eating now. The greatest form of compassion is that if you uh, attend a gathering of knowledge or a gathering of remembrance, and just like our gathering right now, that you remember other Muslims, those who uh, we remember the Muslims who do not have a connection to the masajid and do not come anymore and do not attend gatherings of remembrance and gatherings of knowledge. That uh, it should be enough, it is enough for us if that when we leave our homes, every day we're going to work or we're going to school or we're going to the marketplace, that when we go out of our homes, that we have the concern and the desire for the guidance of all the people that we see in all of creation. We learn from our teachers that if we want to leave the home, that I should carry some water with me and some food with me and some food, some cash with me. Why? Not so I can drink. But if I find someone thirsty, I can give them something to or drink. And if I find someone hungry, I can feed or them. Or someone uh, poor, I can give them. This is the Muslim. If 
If this is not present within you, then you have not ascended the ranks of being a Muslim. And you have not tasted the sweetness of faith. And you live 70 years and die, and you would have never tasted the sweetness of faith. So what good is all of the world in, in, in comparison to the sweetness of faith? If you tasted the sweetness of one subhanAllah, you would never stop saying subhanAllah. If you tasted the sweetness of sending salawat upon the Prophet, you would never stop sending salawat upon him. If you knew the sweetness of prostration, your heart would remain in prostration until the day of resurrection. This is not just words. You are being called to this dish, to this buffet. Enter into Islam and then ascend to Iman and then to Ihsan and then to witnessing your Lord. Islam is not just forms, it is a jewel, and it is tasting, and it is feeling, and witnessing, and being addressed. May Allah honor us with that. Life is short, and the way is long, and the provisions are few. And our life does not is not like not does not have everything we need. But, but if you were sincere with Allah even for one moment, He would give you all of that. Why? Because He is merciful. One of the names of Allah's beautiful names. Is his name the all encompassing or the gatherer? What does it mean that he is the gatherer? Is that he gathers for you all that has passed you of goodness? He has said, Blessed and exalted. Allah does not wrong even a size of a mustard seed. And if it is a good deed, he will multiply it for, for whomever he wills. One good deed. If you do it with love, servitude, trueness, sincerity, and Allah accepts it, he will multiply it. And he will beautify it for you. And he will make it steadfast for you. And he will be given its fruits of it every moment. If he loves you. For that reason, if you pray, don't say, I just want to pray and get it over with. Say, I want to pray a prayer that will give, give me Allah's contentment and good pleasure. If you want to glorify Allah, say, I want with every subhanAllah light from Allah and His gazes upon me. There's a difference between someone who wants to say subhanAllah just for reward and others who say subhanAllah for purely for the sake of our Lord. Because he loves Allah and he reveres Allah and he knows who Allah is. And when he says subhanAllah, he who is he and who are you? Do you remember the Azim? Do you remember the Azim? You remember the exalted, the greatest, the all independent, the one who is living, and that you are the weak one, the one in need, and the one who is going to die soon. You, you are remembering this exalted one? 
that when you remember and reflect upon these meanings, then your subhanAllah is purely for Him. We we glorify Allah saying subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. لكن حقيقة التسبيح إنما تكون بعد أن يكشف لك القيام. But the reality of glorifying Him comes after He removes the veil for you. فلذلك مثلاً. For example, لو رأيت منظراً أو مشهداً كبيراً عظيماً. If you see a great and exalted scene, أشد هشكا. That makes you bewildered. And makes you continuously think about it. The Muslim says what? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When they see this, you don't say wow. Subhanallah. You can say Subhanallah first and then say wow. There's a problem. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So what would it be like if he unveiled for you the light of the Prophet? That's why Allah says in the Quran, Glory be to the one, Subhanallah, took the one who took his servant on a night journey and showed him these exalted and great events. When you see this flower, ترى شكلها الجميل. You see its beautiful form. ولونها الجميل. And its beautiful color. ورائحتها الجميلة. And its beautiful smell. ثلاث جمالات. Three levels of beauty. في مخلوق بسيط. In a simple creative being. سبحان الله. So you see, سبحان الله. هذا يسمى تسبيح الجمال. They say that this is glorification of beauty. إذا شفت شيء عظيم رعد المضرق. تقول سبحان الله هذا تسبيح الجمال. They say if you see something that is great and momentous like lightning or something eventful like that, and you say, SubhanAllah, this is the glorification of majesty. So then you are Khuzaydna Muhammad. But if you see his servant, our master Muhammad, you will glorify Allah by his perfection. That he attained the levels of elevation by his perfection. And that difficulty was removed by his beauty. Then when you send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad, that you should know that Allah has given him things that he has given no Prophet before him. That's why when you send salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad, send salawat upon him with love, with yearning, with reverence, by witnessing the blessings of Allah upon you. This is how the veil will be removed for you. So you will then see things that cannot uh, be described in your imagination. The cosmos is greater and more vast than you can imagine. But the cosmos requires inner sight, not just physical sight. The sight of the eyes cannot see that which is behind the wall. But the inner sight can see from the earth all the way to the throne of Allah. Let your inner sight see. The war that we have between us and the devil is that he wants to he wants to skew, skew the inner sight to make you blind that you don't see anything except the outward and that you disbelieve in the inward as the disbelievers said they say it is only the life of this world we live in we die in. There is life and there is one who will give life. There is death and there is the one who gives death. 
that it is not life and death, but it is the one who gives life and the one who brings death. And then you elevate from a life to the one who gives life, to the one who is ever living, to Allah. That you go from death to the one who brings death to Allah. That you go from witnessing the food to the one who gives you the food to Allah. So if you arrive to Allah, then there is nothing left other than Allah. So then you say Allah, 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 Allah. Allah the Exalted says, Remember the name of your Lord tomorrow and forevermore. What is the name of your Lord? Allah. 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 Fill your book of deeds with His name. Because when you are resurrected on the day of judgment, you will read your book of deeds. It will be said to you, read your book. So you will read what you are writing today. So whoever sends abundant peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad in the life of this world, when it is sent to them, read your book, they are going to read salawat upon the Prophet And if they make abundant remembrance of Allah, saying Allah, 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 Allah. Then when it is said to them on the day of resurrection, read from your book of deeds, they will read Allah, 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 Allah. Well, whoever says coffee, 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 coffee. Whatever you say, it is written down. And now, on, on WhatsApp, you can send a voice message and it goes immediately. These are the keys of mercy. So whoever wants Allah to show them mercy, then they should spread mercy to themselves, within themselves, and to those around them. And for this reason, this is the reality of the Muslim. How many Muslims are there today? If we say that the Muslim is someone who says, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, then the number of the Muslims is great and in number. But if they have not actualized the reality, the realities of Islam, then their Islam is not complete. Is it asking how much time, what, what time it is so that we can have mercy upon you all and not tire you out? Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward you and bless you all. That you've been patient uh, hearing this, these words. We were patient 14 hours in the airplane while coming here. That was just from Abu Dhabi to New York. From New York to San Francisco, it comes out six hours. And from New York to San Francisco, it was six hours. Comes out in Alhamdulillah. He said, I am very happy. This is a blessing from Allah Glory. It is enough for you. It is enough for us that the Prophet said, whoever visits their brother for the sake of Allah, that Allah subjugates for him an angel in the path. And the angel says, you are blessed and your 
your, uh, your path that you are taking to visit your brother is blessed, and there is a place that is set for you in paradise. <laughs> And we have come 19 hours in order to visit you for the sake of Allah. May Allah make you steadfast. May Allah strengthen you. And Islam will remain as long as we are merciful to one another. But if we uh, spread out and, and have discord, we will fail. And Allah will bring, there will others will come and they will carry the banners of Islam. May Allah give us and you all tawfiq. كسوتنا من عري وطعمتنا من جوع وأمنتنا من خوف فنسألك اللهم أن ترحمنا بأنفسنا وأن تنظر إلينا نظرة المقربين والمرحومين والمذبولين يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم نقرأ إلى قلوب الحاضرين ومن في بيوتهم وأولادهم ونسائهم وجيرانهم نظرة تجعلهم من المقربين والمرحومين والفائزين اللهم اجعلنا مذكورين عندك بما بما تذكر في أحبابك أولياءك وأصفيا أكيار بل عالمين اللهم إنك تعلم ذنوبنا فاغفرها وتعلم عيوبنا فاسترها وتعلم حاجاتنا فاقضيها يا خير راضي برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين وصلى الله تعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة I'm sorry for the first question. Salaam alaikum. Sayyidi al-Hayyul Hussein Sallallahu Sayyidi, you mentioned in your lecture that uh, when you give salam to the house, if there is angels or the good of the jinn, then you do salam. If not, if there is nobody there, then you sell on yourself. So how we can see this or what kind of, how we can know it? So, uh, Excellent question. Sahib. Qalu, kayfa da'ruf anna bayta fi malaika? They said, how do you know if your house has angels in it? Al malaika tu da'ti ila diyud alati fiha dikrullah. The angels come to think which there is the remembrance of Allah. That has the recitation of the noble Quran. Within these songs there is the sending of salawat upon the Prophet. And then the homes that have mercy that is expressed between the individuals within the family. So if our homes have the remembrance of Allah and our homes have the recitation of the Quran and salawat upon the Prophet and they have within them mercy that we express towards one another, then the angels will be in our homes. But if our homes have within it uh, people angry at one another, and maybe the spouses yelling at one another, or even insulting one another, then this is a home that angels will not come to. But that the shayateen Rather, the devils will come to it, and we ask Allah for protection. May Allah fill our homes with mercy and the noble angels. And we, as we mentioned, that angels come to the home if the people in the house are glorifying Allah. So what happens if people, for example, are away traveling? 
Tanqal malaika to sabi ha'ad al-bayt, ta'muruhu hatta irajam ahal ul al-bayt. The angels will stay in the house glorifying Allah until the people come home. Lidhalik wa yusamuna bil umar, ay ya'muruna al-bayt al-bayt. And that's why they call them uh, people who uh, stay and, and continue to keep the place developed because they keep it civilized and developed with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is upon you to make sure that your houses have angels in them. Are you prepared for that? Inshallah. Yes. I wanted to ask uh, if the Sheikh can prescribe a zikr that I can just do the whole day just to get connected with Allah. Because a lot of people told me that um, you know you have to have a teacher who gives it to you. Like if I want to say ya hayu ya hayu, like all day long, something short that will lift the veils that he was talking. So the question is, um, is there a particular vicar that can be prescribed uh, to connect oneself to Allah? Typically, this is something that you would want with permission of a teacher. So is there any, any short vicar that could be given that one could do throughout the day? No. There are two He said there are two types of vicar. The first of which is open to all of creation, and that is uh, And they say at the beginning of the spiritual path, one can start off saying it 70,000 times. Why 70,000 times? Because there are people of paradise and uh, the number of 70,000 who will enter paradise without reckoning. So the person starts with 70,000 and then after that they remember Allah in all of their states, all their time. The second kind of dhikr is sending salawat upon the Prophet the scholars have said that sending salawat upon the Prophet وسلم, is a shaykh for one who does not have a shaykh. But, but she mentioned that it will be a means of lifting the veils between her and Allah. It needs two conditions. The first is sincerity in the remembrance. What sincerity in remembrance means is, is that you remember Allah because Allah is deserving and He has to, He is deserving of being remembered. The second condition is consistency and abundantly doing it. That if a servant continuously remembers Allah for 50 years and they don't see anything, they don't stop. Because if they stop, the assistance, the spiritual assistance will stop coming. And we seek refuge in Allah from them. So I think. So one second, the question is, uh, we as a global community are facing a number of challenges, such as atrocity in Palestine and other places, and seeing signs of the Day of Judgment. So how are we supposed to properly respond and protect ourselves and our children? No. The answer is that the beloved Prophet he gave us uh, inf words and information that we have to think about. He said a Muslim for another Muslim is like a foundation of a building or that we are one body. Then they uh, hold one another together. So 
So for that reason, if a Muslim commits a sin, whether as an individual, or as a group, or as an entire country, you will see a, uh, you will see a deficiency in the entirety of the Muslims. There are many problems. Why are they not being solved? Despite the fact that we are constantly praying to Allah, there is one reason. It's because many of us because many of us do not actually uh, look at themselves and say, I am the cause. But they say, oh, that other person is the cause. That particular country is the, the problem. That particular group, they are the cause. So what about you? So if everyone says that the other, you are the cause of the problem, it's never going to be solved. That is why the simple servant, is that the first step towards rectifying the mistake is admitting the sin. If you say the mistake is mine, then you have started to solve the problem. But if everyone says, no, I'm not a, a part of the problem, no, I'm not a part, and the other says, I'm not a part of the problem, and everyone says that, then the question is, okay, who is the, the cause of the problem? That is why the righteous, if they hear even about a problem that occurs in another country, they quickly turn back to Allah seeking forgiveness for their own sins. And this is what happened to who? The Prophet ﷺ. Who is greater than the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? The Prophet وسلم, in the battle of Uhud, he, well, he had his molar teeth broken in battle. You know that the molar teeth, it, it's not easy for it to fall out. The, the blow that fell upon the Prophet was so powerful that it made his molar tooth break and fall out. Did you know the extent of the pain that the Prophet experienced in that? If any one of us goes to the dentist in order to get a molar removed, a person requires an anesthetic in order to uh, numb the area for the tooth to be removed. That the Prophet وسلم, in the battle of Uhud, his molar tooth was broken and his cheek was, uh, was injured. Uh, and uh, and uh, Jabino, Jab 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 his cheek, so nice. What is the cause of that? Because some of the companions, they uh, they did not follow the orders of the Prophet. So and they were those who were on the archer's hill. They, they didn't follow, they were disobedient to his orders, so the Prophet was affected by that. His entire ummah was affected by that. And the same goes for us, if we fall into a sin, the Prophet is affected by that. I'm not saying Palestine or any other country, rather the Prophet وسلم, is affected. For that reason, if you want to help 
uh, and any Muslims in any country around the world, then obey Allah and His Messenger. And do not disobey Allah and His Messenger. And otherwise you will harm the Messenger of Allah. And He does not deserve that from you. He, deserve, he does not deserve for you. Does he deserve for you to harm him? He went through hunger in order for you to be satiated. And he left his homeland so that you could live. And he would cry all night long so that Allah would forgive you. This is the Messenger of Allah. Understand this message. And it will uh, solve all of our problems. May Allah make us and an you of those who obey Allah and His Messenger. <coughs> okay, there's a lot of open questions, so unless there's uh, ones, I'll take these. So the next one is How do you deal with um, people or family who hurt you um, or wronged you? Um, so this is in relation to when you were talking about uh, having mercy on your parents and your family and, and that um, this is hard. How, how can uh, you find mercy in dealing with them sincerely? Uh, the answer is you yourself. How many wrongs have you done between you and Allah? And with that you keep saying, oh Allah have mercy on me. How many people have left their prayer and then have said, oh Allah have mercy on me. You've wronged. You've wronged your own self. You've left the command of Allah. And with that, you still say, My Lord, have mercy on you. If, if someone wrongs you in the house, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, do you want Allah to avenge you in them? So that you can live happily? Would it, would it make you happy to see the one who wrongs you being tormented in the fire? Wouldn't it be better for that person to, to repent and turn back to Allah? And, and ask for your forgiveness? And return your rights back to you? And that this will make the Messenger of Allah happy? It, it doesn't, it's only a little bit of thinking. Don't act based on your base human reactions. Respond with the actions of our Master Muhammad. We have an example. We have the Messenger of Allah. We learn from him. You are a Muslim. You are a believer. The all of the cosmos was created. Allah does not need the heavens, nor the earth, nor mountains, nor trees. He subjugated all of that so that you may worship Him, so that you can be His representative and steward on earth. The a representative has to be merciful. He must be knowledgeable. Needs to be wise. Does not be, does not sound angry. Or someone who takes, makes decisions very hastily. No. Okay, so um, the next question here is, could you please give us some advice on how people can deal with loneliness? Um,
نعم آه. إذا كنت تشعر بالوحدة ما حكيت عنك فاحمد الله عز وجل If you are alone and no one is asking about you then thank and praise Allah for his majesty Why? لأن الله يريدك أن تأنس به Because Allah wants you to feel intimacy with Him. People, they only have problems to share. Someone might praise you today, and then tomorrow they might insult you. Today they might say salam to you, tomorrow they might hit you. But on the day of resurrection, a lot of people will become enemies of one another. Even if it might be a person's father or mother. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on that day, a person will run away from their mother and father uh, and their spouse and their friends and their children. So we counsel anyone who feels loneliness to abundantly remember Allah glorious and majestic. Allah says, I am the companion of the one who remembers me. And if you are someone who nobody asks about or no one sends salam to, then you be the person who asks about others and says salam to others, and then Allah will subjugate angels for you who will keep you company. How many a servant, you see them that they are just by themselves, but in reality there is with them an army of angels. This is the May Allah grant us an inner sight. So I think everybody heard the question, but I'll repeat it for the live stream. So the, the question in summary um, is uh, in terms of, um, you know, needing mercy and needing to learn to be merciful. And one of the foundations of that we heard about was to avoid disobedience. And really the question is, uh, it's difficult and how to Sort of avoid that. Firstly, my brother, may Allah bless you. And that you should know and believe and have certainty in is that Allah has not created you to, to punish you or to leave you. But what he wants from you is that you admit your sins so that he may forgive you. So my book and then love you. And uh, Allah has informed us that if someone comes to him with the entirety of the world full of sins, and they meet Allah with that, that Allah will meet them with the same amount, the fullness of the world of forgiveness. You say that you built your entire life on disobedience. 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. If in one moment of those 60 years, you were sincere in your repentance, and that you felt remorse for that which came before, Allah will accept you and he will forgive you your sins and he will change your sins and turn them into good deeds and he will love you. Allah loves the penitent and that is why he is called the most generous of all those who show him and our Prophet said the one, the one who repents from a sin is like someone who has never sinned your Lord is exalted turn to him and do not listen to the shaitan 
the shaitan, he wants to drug the servant. He wants them to have a bad opinion of Allah. Allah, the blessed and exalted, has said, Those are the ones that we accept from them the best of what they do. And we forgive them their sins. Do you know, my brother? That no one enters paradise except by the mercy of Allah, glorious and majestic, and one day. And this is the means by one by by which one enters paradise. It might be this gathering. That this might be the gathering that is accepted by Allah. So then he would forgive all of what came before our sins. Uh, and I will finish my words because the, the time is short. I will give you a hadith that is similar to what you just mentioned. For us, and for uh, myself, and for you, and for all of us. This hadith is in Sahih al Bukhari. A man came to the Prophet and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I performed the sin. So, so uh, give me the punishment of Allah in that. And the Prophet the Prophet did not speak to him. So he came to the Prophet and he said again, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I performed a great sin, so, so enact the punishment of Allah upon me. And the Prophet did not speak to him. Then the time for prayer entered. Sayyidina Bilal called the Adhan. Then the Sadiqa the was called. So then the Prophet turned towards the people. And the people prayed behind him. And one of them was this man. And he prayed behind the Prophet. So when the Prophet said, Assalamu alaikum, finishing the prayer, the Prophet sat there glorifying Allah. So then this man came and he went through the, the rows to reach and sat right before the Prophet. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I want you to enact the punishment of Allah. <laughs> the beloved of Allah وسلم, said, Oh man, <laughs> did you not pray with us? <laughs> Go, because Allah has forgiven you. <laughs> May Allah forgive us our sins. <laughs> the Prophet said, <laughs> Uh, speaking on behalf of Allah, when and for him I have forgiven him. They are the people that whoever sits with them, they are not of the damned. May Allah forgive them. Everyone, <laughs> وارحم الأمة وابشر الأم واصلح الرحيم الرحيم واجعل حاجاتنا كلها مرضية جاء سيدنا محمد خير القرية وبارك في مجلسنا هذا واجعل من المجالس التي تذكر في ملأ إلى أعلى وأغفر الذنوب واجعلنا من المذكورين في حضرة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولمن سعى في هذا المجلس ولمن سعى في بناء هذا المسجد ولمن قام بالتطوع